Hello, I'm going to go over uh, hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing uh, uses the knowledge of uh, normal distribution. So if you have not uh, viewed the presentation on normal distribution, please do that, uh, then come back and watch this. Okay. All right. Uh, in business research, you may have a uh, bunch of questions. Uh, questions may be in the form of, uh, for example, uh, you might want to know if the average GPA of uh, MBA students is 3.5. Or we can have a question uh, such as, is the average price of gasoline less than $3.10? Or we could have another set of question: is our website re redesign attracting more customers? And or if you're in manufacturing, you could have a question like, uh, has the defect rate reduced uh, with the newer machine that we installed? Or we could have things like, uh, do our online students uh, feel more in control of the class than on campus students? So these are questions that we'd like to find answers to. And uh, to find answers, of course, you must collect data and analyze data. Now, when you, whenever you collect data and analyze data to answer questions like this, uh, you will more, more or less uh, will be creating hypotheses and testing those hypotheses. And uh, what is a hypothesis? Basically, you want to set up an assumption or a hypothesis and try to find support for that hypothesis. Okay. All right. Now, hypothesis is, is basically a statement that can be rejected or not rejected, or you can find support for the hypothesis. And uh, usually, whenever in statistics we talk about hypothesis, it's a tentative assumption about the population parameter. Remember, population parameter is something that is not really known ever, but uh, we use sample statistic as a proxy for population parameter. So if you're interested in population mean, uh, mean gas price, we would use a sample gas price in its place. And uh, so the statement could be in terms of uh, mean GPA is three point above 3.5, or mean price is less than $3.10, or uh, the traffic with old design minus the traffic with new design equals zero essentially saying there is no change in traffic with the new design. Or you could have a hypothesis saying the defect rate with the old machine minus defect rate with the new machine is essentially zero, meaning like no effect, no, we don't have any um, difference. These are statements that we want to find if, if it can be rejected or not rejected. Or satisfaction of customer students, online students, minus satisfaction rating of on-campus students and we find they are, it's close to zero, that will be a, if, I mean, that'll be a hypothesis to test. Now with hypothesis testing, uh, if, you, if you've been wondering about the hypothesis we've been seeing in the previous slide, um, you know, we doesn't look like, you know, what do you want to see if there is no traffic improvement? Where do we want to see if there is no improvement in defect rate? Now, well, we don't. We want to see improvement in defect rate, but it, we need to set it up in such a way that you know it can be tested as a as an as an as a null hypothesis. Okay, so we have this concept called null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis usually denoted by H O uh, O capital and uh, O is a subscript, and alternative hypothesis H A. And now to f you need to phrase a null hypothesis in such a way that uh, it, it, it must be, it, it, you can kind of reject the null hypothesis because of the data that you found. And alternative hypothesis is essentially opposite of the null hypothesis. And uh, whatever the null hypothesis states, it's the exact opposite of that is not null op is alternative hypothesis. A rejection of null hypothesis it means that you find evidence for alternative hypothesis. So by rejecting the hypothesis, you are finding support for alternative hypothesis, and then you are saying yes, there is a, there is an effect. And uh, say for example, with the uh, the alternate average GP of MBA students 3.5, that the the null hypothesis would be mean GPA equals 3.5. The alternative hypothesis would be mean GPA not equal 3.5. With the second question, the null hypothesis would be mean price is greater than or equals to 350, and uh, the alternative hypothesis would be mean price is less than or equals 350. And the web de website re redesign, you could say traffic growth is zero or traffic growth is not zero. That will be the alternative hypothesis. 
defect rate with the old system is the same as defect with the new system or defect rate is the old system is not the same as defect rate as the new system. So alternative hypothesis is what we want to prove and uh, we prove that by re rejecting the null hypothesis. All right. And uh, so what is the hypothesis test? Uh, it's basically we want to find evidence uh, that assumption is incorrect, that the null hypothesis is not supported. How do we do that? We'll we collect data to measure the variable of interest, make sure it is numeric data and that it's, it's collected cleanly, that there is no bias in collecting data and it's properly coded and that there is no data entry error and so on. Then make sure your sample size is large enough that you have, uh, that you can do meaningful analysis. Then you compute uh, sample statistics, for example, mean. Now, all the examples I've been showing are mean data. And then uh, use the sample statistic to conclude about the population. That is all, that's what we do all the time. And when we do a successful outcome of the hypothesis testing, there are two scenarios. That is, when, when the null hypothesis is actually not true, then we, we, if we find statistical evidence, then that is a good successful outcome. Okay. And uh, so, for example, mean GPA was not 3.5, and we found it not to be 3.5. And uh, when the null, uh, the second alternative is that null hypothesis is not is actually true, but we did not, and we did not find evidence to reject the null hypothesis. That's also a good good outcome. So, and we did not find, for example, uh, the price was actually 3.5 or higher, and we did not find evidence to refute it. So these are successful outcomes. Sometimes we have erroneous outcomes of hypothesis testing. You know, we couldn't fail to find uh, the result correctly. So if the null hypothesis is actually not true, and but we, uh, you know, of course the evidence was rejected. On the other hand, if we did not reject, then that will be called a type two error. That is the same as uh, failing to find, uh, you know, the accused to be guilty of a crime when he did actually commit the crime. So that is called type 2 error. Now the other type of error is uh, if the null hypothesis is actually true and we, the evidence must not reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if we did reject it, then that's called type 1 error. Now, con now type 1 er error is, is the same as uh, wrongly concluding uh, that the accused is guilty when he is not actually guilty, when he is actually innocent. Okay, So there are two type 1 and type 2 errors. And when you do research, we try to we want to control for these two types of errors. The probability of type one and type one error is called alpha. And the probability of type two error is called beta. All right. Now, how do we go about doing hypothesis testing? You start by setting up your uh, search question in the form of a testable hypothesis, and then you, in advance, you specify an, uh, kind of an acceptable alpha level. Alpha is the probability of type one error. So type 1 error, and usually you set it to low, like 0.05 or 0 0.01. And, uh, you know, we want to, uh, you know, make sure that, um, you know, we want to, this this error is wrongful conviction of, uh, uh, you know, a innocent person. Then we go ahead and collect data, and then we compute uh, sample statistics of interest. Then we use appropriate tests to see if the data supports the rejection of null hypothesis. The test we'll be using is called something called t-test, and uh, I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, then we compute what's called the p-value, which is the probability of wrong rejection of null hypothesis, which is the p-value. Once you have the p-value, then you kind of compare if the p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis, and if it is not, uh, and and then so we sh so show support for alternative hypothesis. Now, as far as um, when we're doing things with uh, SAS, uh, SAS will be co telling, computing uh, t, t probabilities for us. It will calculate the probability for us, and but then we must know how to exactly interpret the probability. And if we are simply checking for e equality of um, a mean to a particular value, that is the first scenario, then you, you do two times one minus probability as the p-value computation. If you're on the other hand, if you're checking to see if uh, uh, the mean is less than certain other particular value, then uh, you want to use uh, one minus probability uh, that's given by SAS. Uh, the third alternative is if you're interested in finding if the mean is greater than a certain value, then you want to simply use the t value. 
the probability value okay so that's a kind of an overview of uh, how to use uh, how to do hypothesis testing and um, um, wait for a presentation on how to use SAS for doing hypothesis te testing thanks